Right to Die advocates recently filed a lawsuit in San Diego Superior Court to allow medically assisted suicide in California. Christy O'Donnell, one of the three plaintiffs in the suit, is a single mother who says she's never smoked but is dying from terminal lung and brain cancer. The most likely way that I'm going to die with the lung cancer is that my left lung will fill with fluid. I'll start drowning in my own fluid. If I get to a hospital, they'll very painfully put a tube in. They'll drain the fluid from my lung, only to patch me up, send me home, and wait until the next time my lung fills up with fluid, and then I'll continue to repeat that process of drowning painfully until I die. Another plaintiff in the suit is my guest, Dr. Lynette Cedarquist, a specialist in internal medicine, hospice, and palliative care. And Dr. Cedarquist, it briefly tell us the basis of this lawsuit. The basis of the lawsuit is that we want to uh, reverse what's in the law currently in California that prohibits an individual from aiding another person in committing suicide so that this would allow people the choice of having some aid in dying, which we distinguish from people who are committing suicide. Sure, and right now, what does the law allow for? Legally, as far as end of life choices, it does allow for withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment once it's clear that the person is not going to survive. It also allows for terminal sedation for patients that are suffering at the end of life and we can't alleviate their suffering despite maximal palliative care, hospice care, that we have the choice to sedate them. Why did you want to join the lawsuit? Because of my experiences for my 20 years as a physician working with terminally ill patients and seeing that there are some cases in which despite maximizing our palliative care, hospice care, patients still suffer unnecessarily at the end. Is there a particular patient that stands out in your mind that's an example of that? There was one woman I cared for uh, a couple years ago who had uh, been treated for ovarian cancer for 10 years and had endured it, but at the end she was frail, bedbound, completely dependent. She had open sores. We couldn't alleviate her pain. She was miserable. She finally asked to be sedated at home with her family and hospice was reluctant to even do that, I think because they were fearful of being viewed as committing euthanasia. And I felt that she had another two weeks of suffering that could have been prevented. And that always has stayed with me. The Disability Rights Education Defense Fund opposes medically assisted suicide, and they sent us this statement in response to the California Medical Association's new neutral position on the matter that reads in part, the AMA and both associations of California oncologists continue to oppose SB 128. Assisted suicide is a deadly mix with our broken profit-driven healthcare system and puts elders and people with disabilities at great risk. Now, what is your response, doctor, to concerns that right to die laws could lead to coercion or abuse of vulnerable populations like elderly, dis disabled, or terminally ill uh, patients? Well, I understand the fear that people have that that could happen, but I think Oregon has disproved those arguments. They've had similar in law in place for 17 years and tracking the data, these things just have not happened in the 17 years that their law has been in place. Are there safeguards or does this lawsuit, would this law, the SB 128, have safeguards? Absolutely. It really mandates that a patient who's requesting aid in dying has to be evaluated by two physicians to determine that they are indeed terminally ill and that there is no coercion um, and that they're you know, making a free choice and that they have the ability to make that decision. So there are plenty of life, uh, safeguards. Well, Oregon is one of five states that have a so-called death with dignity law. Uh, New Mexico's legislation is actually being appealed right now by the state's uh, attorney general there. Mm -hmm. But 10 states have recently defeated similar measures. So why do you think this lawsuit will lead to change as far as life, uh, end of life options and, and care in California? Well, I think the time has come for California, and I think the case of Brittany Maynard has brought this forth because she was in California and she had to move to Oregon to have access to aid and dine. 
And the majority of Californians are in support of this, the majority of the population, the majority of physicians, and I think that our state is really ready for this legislation. And you say the majority, is that what you're hearing from patients or where, where, where are you hearing that a lot of people support this? Both, there's, there's surveys out there showing that two thirds of Californians support this and I do talk to patients and I talk to colleagues and the majority of the people that I talk to myself are also in support. I see, Dr. Lynette uh, Cedarquist, thank you so much. Thank you.